Hey, everyone, and welcome to the State of the Art Podcast with me, your host, Ethan Appleby. I'm very excited to bring you along as I dive into conversations with amazing people who are at the intersection of art and technology. Each week, you'll hear a different angle about how tech is bringing radical change in the way all of us interact with art. We have on artists to first-time collectors, as well as CEOs from some of the top digital art companies. We'll also look at the effects social media sites and crowdsourcing platforms are having on the art world and explore how other creative industries such as music and fashion were democratized using technology. In this episode, I'm excited to welcome the co-founder of Mural, Vladimir Vakusevich. Mural is a beautiful digital canvas that allows you to access thousands of works from local emerging artists to the masters. It's kind of like the iPod and iTunes for art. Today, I talked to Vlad about the difference between innovation in music and art, how Mural serves as a gateway drug to buying art, and his views on the future of galleries in the traditional art world. So please, allow me to welcome today's guest, Vladimir Vakusevich. So here I am in the office of Mural with the CEO, Vladimir. It's great to have you on the State of the Art. Thank you very much. So I- I'm curious, when I look at your background, you, know, you come from consulting management, then launched a crowdsourcing platform, and now a digital display. How, how did that happen? What was the trigger point? Sure. Well, um, yeah, I guess I've done a lot throughout my uh, short uh, career. Well, um, I went to NYU and I studied um, economics and philosophy. So ever since college, and even before really, um, I was really kind of interested in the combination of culture, broadly speaking, uh, technology and business. Like those three things combined just did it for me for whatever reason. And, you know, coming out of college, it's tough to find a job that fits those three three buckets. So I did, you know, the corporate route for a little while in, in management consulting. Uh, I worked with big companies like Citibank, Thomson Reuters, uh, Pfizer, uh, you know, the big boys, helping them figure out uh, digital strategy, digital technology, uh, looking at smartphones. Uh, the iPhone was coming through at that point. So it was a really fun experience as a 22-year-old traveling the world looking at you know, how is the smartphone going to affect the future of business? Um, but then when I turned 25, um, I realized that I wasn't actually building anything. I was helping other people figure stuff out, but I wasn't accomplish anything that, that you know, felt meaningful to me. Um, and I had seen this trend of crowdsourcing uh, grow um, uh in, in around the world, really, and more particularly crowdfunding. So using the crowd to raise money for different causes. And I said, you know, there's something here. So I started my first company called Rocket Hub, which was a crowdfunding platform, um, primarily for creative endeavors. So similar to Kickstarter, Indiegogo, we were one of the first, first companies in that space in late 2009, early 2010. And it was just a wild ride, building a new category uh, where... Uh, the creative community could finally have an unadulterated voice and and connect with an audience and use that audience to raise money was just a really kind of eye-opening experience. And so through Rocket Hub, we had a wild four years. I ended up uh, um, uh, being the CTO there. I helped build the first product. Um, and after four years, it was acquired. So I was kind of at an inflection point when the company was sold. And what I uh, what I saw there really planted the seeds from mural. Um, what I saw there was that there was a difference between visual art and all other forms of, of media and art that that uh, that was coming up through the, the Rocket Up platform. So musicians, filmmakers, writers, they all had their big democratization moments in the digital realm, whereas visual artists were still kind of trapped in this mix of old school, you know, museums, galleries, and auction houses, and or or low end art.com, um, or or the likes where where it's posters or or, or kind of lower end uh, reproductions. So there was no democratization around the middle of the market for for normal people to find and discover art. And I'm sure that's kind of a lot of it, it's parallel to what you've done in, yeah. in in your career. Yeah. And so, I mean, just you know, quickly, what was that? What was the moment then where you said like this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to solve this in with a, di- you know, a digital display. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's a great question. I, what, what I found was that, um, it was kind of like a, like a, 
l little like step by step additions that l ended up tipping me over into like I gotta do this. Yeah, uh, it was just seeing like how you know um, uh, a musician could reach um, uh, an audience of thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of people in a matter of, of in some cases, hours, uh, whereas uh, these visual artists were, were like handing out flyers to, uh, you know, uh, group gallery shows on, on, on the Lower East Side. There was like the, there was this disconnect where I'm, I get the same emotion when I read a book or when I listen to a, a tune or when I look at a beautiful piece of art, a uh, visual piece of art, um, why can't I have the same level of dynamic interaction and daily kind of experience around that. Yeah. And so when Rocket Up was acquired, I knew I was going to do this, uh, but I didn't know at first that the, the right solution would be a digital canvas. Mm -hmm. We were looking at different uh, uh, potential apps. We were looking at different um, uh, uh, ways of doing maybe on, a, on different screens or uh, beyond. But what, what we really saw was that um, we needed to build a beautiful, dedicated device to get this market going. Something you can buy, you take it out of the box, you put it on the wall, and all of a sudden you have access to a world of art that you've never had before. So it was, it, it kind of built into, into this. That's right, I, I love the word, the, I, I was using digital display, but apparently digital canvas. I'll forgive you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, I should have yeah. asked, I, yeah. I love that. And this, this is where I geek out because I'm, you know, I, I come from more of a tech background, and, and reading about the display, it's like, what, 16 million shades of color, some proprietary technology. Right. I mean, you know, there's people out there who say, oh, this is a television. Sure. It's, tell us more. Like, what, yeah. what, 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 what is a digital canvas? And yeah, absolutely. So after we said we were going to do this, um, we set up shop at an at a art co-op downtown in, in New York. So the first year of our company, we've been around for three years or so. So the first year was spent developing this product alongside a slew of visual artists, photographers, designers, um, all kinds of uh, very talented, in some cases, very interesting characters were coming in and providing live feedback around what we were building. We probably went through a few thousand different permutations of the product. We looked at different screen technologies. We looked at different uh, layers that we could t put on top of it. I went down to Universal Studios to look at the Harry Potter stuff that they built. Uh, it, it was really kind of an exploratory phase, a wonderful phase in our company where we were going through new versions of the product on a daily basis. And um, what we ended up with was a combination of beautiful hardware that's customized for visual art. Uh, paintings, photography, in some cases moving images as well, um, and uh, a system of firmware that we built. So that means that we control the display in a completely different way than you control a TV or a monitor or a phone. There's no video board. We built a computer that directly controls the pixels in a way that adapts to the artwork uh, in a dynamic way. So that means we can go very dark or very bright. We can go different uh, uh, gamma correction levels, uh, color contrast, etc., based on both external factors. So how, did, how is this room lit? Where is the display located? And internal factors. What image is being shown? Is it a Van go with a primary color blue, uh, oil on canvas, that's going to be displayed differently than a Stieglitz uh, image uh, that was created, you know, uh, sometime after that. So uh, this internal external algorithm is actually patent pending. So we are, we, ha we have a patent pending on the full technology right now, and, and hopefully we'll be receiving that shortly. Um, and after a year, after the prototyping period, we were getting artists coming in and saying, Wow, this looks this looks stunning. I want to be a part of this, and we knew we were onto something at that point. When even the artistic community was saying, like, "Wow, this this is absolutely not what I expected. It looks like a piece of paper. It looks like a printed, uh, beautiful image." That's great. I love I love hearing that you you know prototyped and were working directly with artists because I think that's something you know in looking at this industry not enough people do in terms of like solving a real need and working, you know, like using design thinking or lean startup yeah. to, to get in there. Uh, well, it's, it's tough with, with hardware. Um, yeah. it, it, yeah. it, it, you have to um, um, kind of uh, turn it around quickly, but we still have to go, you know, and prototype computer boards and, and circuits and, and, and chips and all that stuff. So uh, we've had to build a very uh, multifaceted team from, yeah. from, from the get-go. Um, but I think that's made us stronger. 
Yeah, I'm not envious. No. So software is hard enough. <laughs> yes. So let's go down the artist route. Yeah. Uh, how, um, how do you see this changing the way artists create? Or do you think it has any effect on, on them? I mean, seeing that it's sort of a digital first display. Right. So um, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, yeah. I, I think that um, we view ourselves as a combination, uh, a new medium and a distribution platform. Um, so to start, we've focused, it, focused uh, the concept on the distribution side of it. So what that means is that we're predominantly taking uh, existing artwork um, that's existed from all throughout history up to present artists, and we're creating beautiful archival digital reproductions uh, through photography and scanning. Um, and we're putting those types of artworks um, on the platform to start. So it's creating this, starting with an encyclopedic perspective through to contemporary and, and, and working artists, but really leveraging the fact that we're on thousands of walls and we create a direct connection between the customer and the artist, leveraging uh, our platform as a distribution network uh, for artists uh, from the past, the present, and future artists to reach a, a new and, and wider audience. Um, over time, we see that evolving uh, not just as a, as a distribution platform, but as a new medium where the artistic community is already starting, but will continue to, to grow in, in, in using our platform as a way to create new artwork. So we're already starting to do that. We're starting to commission artwork um, for the mural platform, and that will just continue to grow. So what does that mean? It means art that may have temporal components to it. It could be art that has geographic uh, components to it. So it's all these kinds of new factors uh, that our medium, the mural platform, allows for artists to, to grasp. But that'll take time. Yeah. Um, you know, Netflix, uh, Spotify, I, even iTunes, and they all started with uh, existing content, and then they grew into new platforms, new media. I see us kind of following the same trajectory. We're starting with the things that people know and they love, and then in the next few years, we will grow into a new medium for brand new types of art. Looking so looking on the other side from a from a consumer perspective, you know I'm always curious. Obviously, you know we've talked a lot. I've been in this space and looking at sort of buyer behavior, yeah. and you know I'm who who's buying your platform and where in their sort of life cycle of collecting art are they, and 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 what is the effect of then uh, buying a mural uh, digital canvas? Yes, do for them like moving forward. Right. Um, what we found is really. Um, for Mural, the, the sweet spot is um, people who have some awareness of art in their life, but um, maybe they've been to a museum a few times or a gallery show, but um, don't really necessarily know where to start. Um, and what we found is that Mural is almost in a way kind of a, a gateway drug in, in, into the art world. Um, it, you buy it, you put it on your wall, it looks beautiful, but the most, I think, compelling part of it is that it's dynamic. So you can control it. You can say, Mural, you know, give me something new or Mural, give me a Van Gogh or, or something like that. Yeah. So it's, um, it's, an, it's a beautiful extension of someone's home. Uh, oftentimes, it's maybe the first or second or third art piece that someone's purchased. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's not um, uh, some, often, it's rarely you know, the, the 50th piece that someone buys. We do have collectors that have murals in their homes as an add-on to their collection, but the sweet spot is really you know, someone late 20s through, through early 40s who has some experience, uh, some awareness of culture, but really wants to begin diving deeper and have a window into different worlds, uh, both geographically and temporally. You can go back in time with Mural. Um, you can, you know, we, we are recreating shows from the past uh, through our collections. So we, we just did the 1913 Armory show. Uh, uh, so the, that, what, what does that mean? It means that um, you can actually travel to different periods through the mural platform, or geographically. You can look at artists in Japan, in uh, Europe, in Africa, in India, uh, in Latin America. So it's um, it's really, like I said, a gateway in, in, into a new world. I, I, I mean, I love that and the idea of just imagining yourself, you know, like you said, at the Armory a yeah. hundred years ago. That's right. You know, what would that be like, and, and what artwork would you be looking at? 
And that's impossible for museums to recreate. Getting those pieces uh, in one place uh, physically would be pretty much impossible to do. Whereas what we can do is we can kind of do it. And, and that's really, really compelling and cool. I, I imagine it helps people to like build confidence and also educate themselves yeah. to a point that they then get even more comfortable within the art space. Yeah, I mean, one of our missions is, uh, one of our primary mission is, is, is to kind of demystify this world um, a little bit. You know, there's a lot of bullshit in, in the art, art world around these artificial kind of filters, these scary notions. Uh, a lot of people um, are, are intimidated to go into a gallery because they just don't know uh, if they'll say the wrong thing. And, and what we're trying to say is that there is no wrong thing to say. Art is a very personal experience. And what's more personal than putting it in your home? And so that's what we're doing. We're, we're allowing people to really personalize their taste um, by allowing people to explore more than they've ever had uh, before. So, yeah, I, I, do you guys like looking at, at the data? I mean, are there any behaviors that you've seen that you find like are interesting or unique or surprising or? I think, you know, uh, some things are to be expected. Like um, people start with what they know. Um, most of our uh, customers, uh, our, our users, they start with pieces that maybe they've heard about before, you know, Van Gogh or Monet or, uh, you know, Frida Kahlo or, or something a little more contemporary, but, but known. Um, and then over time, we see that people start diving a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And then they start making connections. And so what we're doing is making that easier for people to make a connection between uh, oil on canvas impressionism and, you know, contemporary uh, graffiti art that's being yeah. created now. Like those types of connections can be done instantaneously uh, through our platform. And so that's what we're making it easier to, to go from something that you feel safe and comfortable with to something that may be pushing the boundaries a little bit. So that's in terms of like expected behavior. What we didn't expect is just the high frequency of use. People look at four to five artworks per day on average uh, on their mural canvas. And generally how it works is they download a new gallery, we call it a playlist, so a collection of, of, of works, and they look through three or four different artworks, and then they find one that they really love, and then they leave that up for, 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 you know, for a day or two. And so it's this pattern of like discovering new art and then living with it for a little while that keeps recurring on the platform that we weren't necessarily expecting. We thought people might change it once a month or once a, you know, a week at most, but two, three, four, five times a day has been really surprising in that people really view it as kind of a new media mechanism for discovering art. And I think that's the primary reason why I feel that Mural doesn't compete with traditional art. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're not looking to, you know, take away from originals or even, you know, reproductions and, and limited edition prints. We're really kind of a, um, making the pie bigger in a yeah. way. And that's how we perceive it. Uh, that's how we see it. We, we see it as a, as a, as a, as a market building uh, exercise uh, more than anything else. You're doing the hard work for the rest of us. I hope so. Yeah, I, I know. I love that. And, the, and, and you know, the idea of, of bringing it in the home, I think, that, that notion of letting people see this art in their home as it would hang in a museum, uh, you know, goes a long way to making them more comfortable. Yeah. There, there are a trillion walls in the United States with a T where people hang art and photography. Um, that's, that's a lot of, that's a uh, lot of walls. walls. Uh, and that's what we're going after. We're, we view ourselves as a potentially uh, mainstream product that can be in most people's homes, most people's offices. And in five years, the idea of having one or two art pieces in your life that change, uh, we feel is inevitable. Yeah. You, everyone will have that. Um, it's just a matter of who does it. And we're, we're positioning Mural to be, to be that company. Love it. You talk about playlists, which makes me think of music. Yeah. I read in Forbes, you said in many ways, we see ourselves as a kind of uh, like the iPod. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be the iPod of art? Well, that, a few things. One is just from a from a tactical perspective. Um, before the iPod, there were many MP3 players out there. There were you know there were uh, different companies making uh, these hardware products that had some traction, but didn't really hit the mainstream. And what Apple did really well is it combined uh, a beautiful piece of hardware with an intuitive user interface, 
and it added um, uh, a database of music or a database of art in, in our case. Um, so the idea of putting these three things together, a beautiful piece of hardware that looks and feels like a painting or a photograph, uh, an interface that is easy and fun to use, plus a large and growing library of, of artwork uh, evokes in me that feeling of the of the iPod when it when it originally came about. Um, so so it's really putting these three components together is is what it means to me in terms of um, kind of a, tactically what being the iPod is 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 uh, relevant to. But um, kind of more strategically, I think what the iPod did is you know it put music into everyone's pocket um, and not just a CD uh, or a tape, but a whole world of music and it allowed for uh, the cloud-based uh, music platforms to eventually be born which allowed for thousands of new artists to to be created and you know we're, the market's still figuring out in the music space whether that's good or good or bad but I think in general if more people have more music that's a good thing and I think we're looking to do the same thing with with visual culture with art is if more people have visual art visual culture in their life that's a good thing and that's what we're striving for yeah I mean I remember when the, I don't remember because I wasn't alive, but I read that when the radio came out, uh, you know, a lot of purists in the music industry were terrified. That was basically going to be the end of concerts, huh. you know, because why would people leave their home, yeah. Yeah. you know, to go to a concert where they could listen, you know, in their house? And that, you know, obviously it had quite the opposite effect. So it sounds like you think the same of, of what you're doing and bringing art into the home, that's that, right. that actually it will not mean people will be less likely to go to museums or galleries, but more likely. Well, I, I view it as another um, floor on the building that is art. Um, you know, we started with the. You have great analogies. Oh, thank you. I, I need to like uh, spend a day and think through some. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> we, 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 well, think about it. Like, we started, like, the foundation uh, is, I guess, human nature. And then after that, we got the caves, and then we got parchment, and then we got canvas, and then we got oil, and, 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 and now we have photography and digital imagery. I think what we're doing is just, it's just another floor. So we're, we're just adding to a world that's, there um but it, it, it makes it a little bit more interesting of a building it makes it more fun um and it makes going to the other floors uh more compelling uh so i, I think that um it's just an addition to the art world it's mm -hmm. an addition to the way that we view and experience art and it, because of that it will allow for more people to go downstream, to go to to a, a gallery show, or to go to a museum retrospective, or to buy an original piece. Um, and we're already seeing that. We have real world examples of our uh, uh, cu customers that have a mural canvas in their home, uh, they discover an art piece, and then they create a vacation around that art piece and go to the, the, uh, you know, the Louvre in wow. Paris. Um, we thought it'd be the other way around, where it would be like you see a piece in a museum and then you come home and then you put it on your mural. It's the opposite. Um, a lot of people are finding that mural is that first place where they experience art and then they go and kind of um, have that quote unquote real world experience around it as yeah. well. Uh, we're seeing the same thing around artists where uh, people are starting to connect uh, with artists on mural. Um, over time, we're going to make that even easier. But right now, we're seeing that you know people discover an artist and then they contact them, and we've actually had real transactions take place uh, where people buy that that artist's piece uh, outside of the mural platform, and that's great. If we can do that all day long, we'll we'll be happy. That's a, so you're literally bridging the gap between the online and offline world. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, and because it's a it's a a dedicated device for art it's on un, it's unfiltered right it, it's not on a phone where it competes with a thousand other apps it's not on a tv where it competes you know with with the game or or the news yeah. it's not on an ipad it's a device meant for visual art visual culture uh and because of that it makes that bridge a lot more powerful huh uh, i love i'm like thinking through the analogies that you have what um thinking about bridging this online offline world i mean how do you see the future of, of galleries that's a that's a good one um, yeah it, it's funny what we found was that um the artists were the fastest to adopt yeah. the mural platform um the museums are coming now after that um auction houses as well the galleries in some way are the most uh 
um, I don't know if I should say this, but they're the most afraid of what we're doing yeah. uh, in that we can potentially disintermediate uh, the galleries as middlemen, yeah. uh, as filters. Um, I don't really see that happening. I see um, the galleries continuing to be what they are, is, uh, is experts in, in, in their field, experts in a particular perspective mm -hmm. uh, on the art. So in some ways, it's almost like I see the galleries as being DJs on top of, of the mural keep of the mural platform. Just keep coming. This is great. <laughs> that, that, that's right. So they are. They will be the. You know the uh, DJs are really popular. These yeah. Days. Like DJs are making huge careers, and I think that's what the galleries will be. They will be DJs on top of the mural platform in a way that uh, you know talented tastemakers um, can can be. Yeah. Well, I mean. What do you think, I mean, about the gallery? So it's, you kind of talk a little bit more about the curator, which actually yeah. I really like, and the idea of them being DJs. I mean, what about the gallery and the gallery experience? Mm. Um, I mean, do you see it staying the way it is? Do you see it going, you know, do, you know, using mural in the future instead of the actual art pieces? Do you see it being a combination? Do you see galleries going away and instead pop-ups coming up? I mean, how do you think that the physical, more the physical space? I mean, as long as we're not all, like, uh, plugged into the matrix... Um, I, I, I see galleries uh, continuing to exist. Yeah. Just you know, for the for the for the reason that people you know like to drink wine and go out at night and have uh, a social experience. Yeah. Um, and there are different focal points for that for those social experiences. It could be music. It could be uh, going to the theater, or it could be seeing art uh, on the wall. So I think the galleries will be those types of. It, it, they'll forever be those community. Um, centers in a way mm -hmm. um, that will be necessary. Now we're already starting to see galleries because they can't fit, you know, every art piece on the wall. They're starting to use the mural platform to both showcase art outside of the gallery and inside the gallery. So many galleries already have one or two mural canvases in the, in their space just to kind of extend uh, their reach mm -hmm. in terms of what they can show uh, potential customers. So. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a predominantly symbiotic relationship that we're seeing, and it will just continue to, to, to evolve. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even muse, you know, museums where they're often only showing something like 2 to 3% right. of their work, which is crazy yep. if you think about that. I mean, they're literally holding you know, the culture in their hands, and we're only seeing 2% of it. And it's not just museums. It's corporations. Yeah. It's, it's private collections. Um, probably the world ends up seeing something in that vicinity is probably even less than a percent in terms of all the uh, uh, art that's out there. So I, I think if we can unlock another percent or two percent, that's huge yeah. in, in terms of what's what's visible. Um, you know, uh, Microsoft has 5,000 pieces in their collection. Goldman Sachs has tens of thousands of pieces in their collection. Um, all these artworks that are in vaults hopefully um, can be seen by more people through our platform. And we're starting to see that. Yeah. yeah. So looking sort of even further ahead and, and more generally, I mean, there's a lot of talk on AR and VR. You know, how, how do you think those will play a role either, you know, directly with Mural or, or within the art space of how people practically, how it's practically applied to the way people experience art? Yeah. Uh, it's something I, I, I think about a lot. Uh, you know, in, in some ways, Mural is already an augmented reality platform. You yeah. know, we just change your reality a little bit differently than, than you having to put on glasses or, or some other form of uh, uh, hardware on top of your, your face. It's already, because the mural canvas is in your room, it's in your space, it already augments your reality in a way that's, that's unique and, and dynamic. Mm -hmm. But getting back to kind of the more direct question, like I, I think that the, the challenge right now with, with AR and, and, and VR in particular is that it still um, takes you out of life. Like it, it's it's something that moves you from hey, I'm in, I'm living life, I'm working, I'm walking, I'm talking, um, to I'm doing this AR VR thing now, which um, is good for installation for art installations. It's good for particular events, but I don't know where it goes yet in terms of the mainstream uh, use cases, particularly when it comes to when it comes to art. You know, when it comes to entertainment and and, and gaming and all that, those are obvious in, in terms of use cases. But in terms of art, I, I don't see it yet where someone, you know, goes home and has a VR set that they put on just for, for an artistic uh, experience. At least not yet. Uh, uh, although I do count video games as art, it's a different type of um, different type of experience. 
Um, so we'll see. Um, I think that there's there's potential, but um, it will take probably longer than we think. Yeah. So looking forward 10 years, I mean, are, are there other things that you think will have an effect, how technology will have an effect on the art world? Um, you know, I mean, one, one idea is, we, we talked about this earlier, do you think artists still use, you know, canvas and acrylic, or do you think they use the medium of the day, which would be an iPad to create art? That's almost like low-hanging fruit to me. Like, I, I think, yes, people will use iPads, people will use three-dimensional, like, uh, uh, like you mentioned VR and AR, I think that the interesting stuff, stuff around that is creating three-dimensional artwork um, in, in, in this realm. But, like, that's obvious. I think the more interesting questions to me are more almost like sociological in that if we have robots doing all the hard work, what do the humans do? Uh, and I think what the humans will do is more and more what you and I define as art. Um, so I think technology fundamentally will lead to whole new forms of art just because it will lead to whole new forms of artists working in, in, in that sphere. Um, because, you know, if the autonomous cars are driving us around and the robots are building those cars, what are we doing? Well, we're eating and, you know, talking, a few other things, and then we're also creating art. Uh, and I think that's the real interesting part of, of what we're doing is that uh, we're positioning Mural to be that kind of 10-year, um, 20-year, 100-year company that facilitates these huge cultural shifts. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, I think we have to end on that. I, I had a few more questions, but I'm pretty sure they won't top that answer. All right. Um, before I let you go, can we do a quick rapid fire? Sure. All right. Who's your favorite artist? Um, I like to get lost in Dali. Salvador Dali is, is, uh, is, has been my favorite for the last six months. All right. But it changes a lot. I'm, I'm sure. Yes. Four, four times a day, right? That's for at least. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Art will be as popular as music in what year? It already is. Okay. Ooh, that's the first time I heard that. And here, I know you're going to have a good answer for this one. What's your life motto? Ooh. Um, I have a few. Um, one is trust is the currency of success. Yeah. Uh, so that means that I always give more trust than I should because it leads to good things. It leads to getting hurt sometimes, but it also predominantly leads to good, to good things. Another motto is just don't stop moving. What I found is that the biggest cause of why anyone fails, including artists, but also entrepreneurs and beyond, is people get paralyzed. They get stuck. And what I found is like it's better to take a step back than to take no step at all. Uh, just because you get instant feedback, you get that experience and you get learning uh, that you can't get by just kind of standing still. And then the, uh, the, the third part, um, and this is more of a kind of a almost a, a Zen type perspective, is that uh, all of this, what we do is temporary. It's none of it's permanent. None of it uh, is is everlasting. And that is a very freeing concept to me. Uh, I don't necessarily get scared or or stuck or uh or limited because i can always go back and say fuck it whatever happens happens it's it's all temporary okay, but this has been a blast i'd say it's early in the morning i got you up uh and and really like i'm walking away from this inspired and with more analogies than i had walking in uh and, and definitely a lot more to think about on my train ride home than there you I, go than i thought i would so Thank you again. Where, where do we find you? Where do we find Mural? The best is Mural.com. M-E-U-R-A-L.com. Okay. And if people want to reach out to you directly? Um, they can find me there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Twitter. Oh, yeah. It's Twitter. Twitter at Meet Mural. Instagram at Meet Mural. Um, and just, yeah. you, can, you can find me. I'm easy to find. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. So don't forget to visit Mural at Mural.com, that's M-E-U-R-A-L, or on Twitter at Meet Mural. And if you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review it. Leaving a review is super easy, and it helps listeners like you discover the podcast. Also, don't forget to check us out at State of the Art on Twitter or Instagram for behind-the-scenes photos, a sneak peek to next week's episode, and really cool videos around art and tech. Until next week, this is Ethan Appleby, signing off of State of the Art.